So how you doing? Dude, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> yeah. How many hours out are you from getting on stage? Uh, let me check. So it's 1045 right now. Um, that puts us right at about 11, uh, no, 12. Let's see. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't do math. About 11 hours and 15 minutes. Wow. 11, hour, 11 hours and 15 minutes from your pro debut. Yeah, man. <laughs> How does that feel? It feels really, really good. It feels really good. Um, it's honestly a dream come true, man. I've always wanted to be an IFPB pro. I always wanted to compete as a pro. So uh, it just feels, it feels like, you know, I'm kind of doing what I'm supposed to be doing as well. Mm, right. It feels right. Yeah. What, um, what are some of the feelings going through and thoughts going through your head um, coming into the show? Uh, the biggest thing I would say is, you know, I'm just very excited to, um, you know, really, really introduce myself to the world um, and just kind of, you know, come on with a lot of energy. So with that being said, um, I'm just excited to uh, introduce, like I said, introduce myself, kind of make a name for myself and just kind of um, show people who I am. Yeah, absolutely. Um, f- for those who don't know you, did you want to uh, introduce yourself and uh, give a brief bio? Yeah, I would absolutely love to. I appreciate that. Um, so I'm 24 years old. Um, I turned pro at the 2021 Junior USA's in Classic Physique, where I also won the middleweights class. And yes, and middleweight. Yep. <laughs> so uh, people always ask me, you know, do I, you know, prefer classic or bodybuilding? I like, I like it all. I don't see a classic or bodybuilding really as anything different. Um, I kind of just see it as, uh, you know, more, more of just, you know, classic is just smaller, you know, more aesthetic type of bodybuilding. And then I see, uh, you know, open bodybuilding is just, you know, taking it as far as you possibly can. So with that being said, um, a little bit more about me, um, I actually started out in men's physique back in, uh, 20, what was it? 20, 2015 actually. And I was 17 years old when I did my first competition. So I've done this, you know, my whole entire adult life, (laughs) I'm 24 now. Um, With that being said, a little bit personal about me. um, I'm engaged. I have a fiance named Stacey Tutela. I have a a 15 year old, or excuse me, 15 month old, 15 month old daughter um, named Zora. And uh, beyond that, I'm a personal trainer um, at one of our, one of our local gyms um, in Virginia. I actually live in Portsmouth, Virginia. Um, but I live right outside of Chesapeake and Virginia beach and Norfolk. So I'm all in, all in the seven cities uh, in Virginia. Okay. How's the, um, how's the weather out in Virginia right now? Is it still cold or is it kind of getting into spring? It's, kinda, it's funny. You know, people always say this from Virginia, you know, the weather's all over the place. There'll be one day where it's uh, 70 degrees and then the next day it'll be 40. <laughs> mm-hmm. We're kind of up and down, but it's not quite as cold as it is here in Boston. <laughs> yeah, Boston, in Boston's right off the water, right? Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, you yeah. can you can see the water pretty much from here. Yeah. yeah, in that uh the Arctic breeze. Oh my gosh. Yeah, or Atlantic, Atlantic. Atlantic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, there was like ice and snow still on the floor or on the ground, excuse me, like right all around the city. Yeah. Man, uh 20 24 years I spent in Wisconsin and uh I don't miss I don't miss it. <laughs> Wisconsin. Oh man. Yeah. It's really cool there. Yeah, it's uh, the weather's. I mean, I don't want to talk about weather. I feel like we're a um, Paul from uh, Fuad Abiyad's podcast talking about weather. <laughs> <laughs> kind of rambling a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but shoot, man, uh, coming into your pro debut, uh, we talked a little about you, your wife, your uh, gorgeous little daughter. Um, you, you sound like you're excited. Uh, how was the prep? How long was your prep coming into the show? So I officially prepped for the show for about 12 weeks. Um, it was a really, really good prep. Uh, I actually prepped myself for this competition. So um, with that being said, um, really, I was a lot of a lot of the, the early period of prep was just kind of data collection, um, kind of trying to make sure that I was priming my body. So I'll say it like this. It was a 12 week official prep, but I've been, excuse me, mentally prepping since about, I would say Thanksgiving. Uh, the day after Thanksgiving, you know, I said, I'm going to you know, get on diet. I'm going to focus, you know, I'm going to diet hard through Christmas, take the week of Christmas off, um, diet hard, you know, the rest of the year, you know, starting with that day off after Christmas. And, um, you know, I kind of kind of saw into fruition, you know, what I would be able to do. And that's when I made the decision to choose a Boston pro pretty much at the end of December. Okay. 
And, and what's kind of your thought process coming into the Boston Pro? Uh, get in early so you can get an idea of, um, you know, how that season's going to look for this year? That is exactly what I had in mind. Um, I wanted to jump into Boston, especially being a bigger show, um, kind of get some, you know, stack, see how I stack up against some solid competitors, get some feedback from the judges. You know, I love to get feedback from the judges. Um, I love to have them you know, actually see me, you know, and tell me you know, what I can do exactly to improve on. So with that being said, the idea was to jump into Boston. Um, you know, if we're, if we're good enough to qualify for the Olympia there, then we, you know, we keep going. If we don't, we keep going either way. Um, I just wanted to run the circuit, you know, get my name out there and, and compete, compete in as many competitions as possible uh, this year without yeah. you know, outrunning myself, without, you know, taking myself too far. Yeah, yeah. Get your name out there and then also just get some stage experience. Let the judges see you. I like that. Is there a, is there a way you can put your phone uh, rested against something when your oh, yeah. uh, when your hands are moving? IPad. It's um it's muffling oh, your mic. I do apologize. I have my iPad here. Um, let okay. me set it up on this uh, dock. Yeah, no, you're good. See some bicep <laughs> veins. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I think that's a bit. Actually, that's a better angle now that you got the camera sideways. That's good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let me. See I get I get spoiled with my my home setup so. Yeah, man, you got a dope setup. You got a really cool setup. It's getting there. I um I have a a big backdrop thing with um these are actually like um like studio sound. I mean, you, you can't see it, but I got like some studio pads I'm going to put up Animals, tomorrow. Yeah. But That's pretty cool, man. It's coming together. I got my uh you saw when you when I came in, I turned my lights on. So Yeah, yeah. I got these big um big panels up here, so really That's makes really me cool. super albino, but uh it works. <laughs> Man, you got some color. Come on now. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you you can see this. This is gingery, so you can imagine. Like, I mean, it's it's pretty bad. <laughs> and I live in California now, so uh, no excuses. Okay, okay. What part of California? Uh, I'm stationed just outside San Francisco. Awesome. See, so active duty. Yep. Yep. What's up? Thank you for your service. Of course. Oh, yeah. it's, uh, it's a pleasure. I know people always say that, but you know, my dad was a commander in the Navy, so I got a lot of respect. Heck yeah, yeah. I, I've been doing this for a minute, but uh, my passion's this. So I try to make as much time as possible to to cover you guys, and advocate for the athletes. I really do appreciate that coverage as well, too. Yeah, it's. I mean, something I've noticed is everyone wants to talk about open. Everyone wants to talk about classic, but no one really wants to talk about. And I was guilty for a while. Uh, no one wanted to talk about men's physique uh, right. or. 212 kind of gets dogged on a little bit, which is, I think, hilarious for how competitive uh, that those lineups are. You know? Oh, my God. 212 is, I will say it like this. Some um, people, you know, always ask, especially after I turn, you know, turn pro at Junior USA's, you know, whether I like, prefer 212 or Classic. Like I said, you know, I still see bodybuilding as bodybuilding. I'm not a 212 competitor anytime soon. Yeah. But never, you know, I'm never against, you know, moving up to a different division. Mm-hmm side tangent uh since you're classic um and we're talking about you know people moving up um were did you look at oh man i can't even think of the name let me see if i can find his physique update um lord jones have you seen his uh his physique updates as, as since he announced going from classic to um to uh, open Man, I always thought that he had a freakish physique, but seeing him like just fully, fully grow and just, you know, fill out, like he looks insane, dude. Like the shape, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 like the structure of his body. Like mm -hmm. it's funny because he still has, in my personal opinion, classic proportions, but yeah. the size, you know, the pure mass is just its next level. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, Jesus yeah, Christ. I always saw him as, you know, being like a, a bodybuilder's classic guy. Uh, yeah. And then I didn't even know he announced uh, switching over to open, but I think it's going to fit him really well. Put him next to like a, um, who was the guy um, that placed well at the Arnold UK last year? Um, younger guy, really nice classic lines. I'm trying to think of, I I'm not going to lie. I didn't pay too much attention to the Arnold UK last mm -hmm. year. Let me see if I can. I think his name's Hector or H I know who you're talking about now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think he's like, he's European for sure. He's a tall mm -hmm. black. Yep. Yeah. He looks amazing. I cannot, I can't think of his name though. Mm. Yeah. I can't think of his name either. I'm kind of bummed out. 
you never know where the conversation is going to go. So it's impossible to, 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 to <laughs> prep notes. <laughs> yeah. My brain. I mean, if, if you've watched my channel for a while, like my brain goes just everywhere. So. Man. Yeah. I've been watching your channel for a little bit now. I'll say that, you know, I like to I like to try like one thing I'll say about me personally is like, you know, I like to see everything. I like to, I do a lot of research. I'll say it like that. I do a ton of research. So, you know, if I, if I hear about a show coming up or if I, you know, I want to get everybody's different perspective, you know, and I really, really want to learn, you know, what people look for in bodybuilding and things like that, you know, so that not just I can become a better bodybuilder, but so mm -hmm. that we can continue to grow the sport as well. So, you know, I appreciate what you guys do. I really, really do, man, especially you. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Uh, I'd like to see more um, transparency with the judging and actually having judges come on and talk in a candid way. Cause I always feel like, I don't want to say they're politicians, but it always feels like they're kind of holding back a little bit on what they can and can't say. Uh, and it, it just makes people like me kind of be hesitant about like, I mean, case in point, like I always feel like they're pushing a narrative with Brandon Curry. And I know that that's not a popular opinion, but just, I just never understand why they always put him above some other competitors. Uh, and it's, it seems to be like consistent in some shows, but Again, I know it's not a popular opinion, but um. hey, man! I mean, I think that um, I think the judges, you know, would be willing to get on a little bit. But like, like you said, you know, it's I feel like there's an art to judging. So, um, mm. with that being said, um, there's certain things that I feel like you kind of have to be a judge to understand, if you will. Absolutely, yep. if you will. But and you got to be there too, is what I keep hearing. Yeah, that's the biggest thing that I could say that I've learned in the past year. You know, seeing pictures and video is really, really great. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't, you know, we got 4K now. You've seen Gilco Productions, you mm -hmm. know, 8K, excuse me. You got 8K now. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, um, it's just something about like the quality and the, 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 the muscle and the skin, things like that, that you can kind of just see a little bit better in person. How mm -hmm. the lights, you know, kind of flash off of the oil, things like that, um, that slightly make a difference. But with that being said, man, I, I think that William Bonax should have took that Arnold. No offense to Curry. No offense to Curry. I originally yep. predicted that Curry was going to win, and I predicted Bonax for second. But yep. Same. he blew us away, man. <laughs> well, I don't think anyone expected um, Bonac to make that drastic of a comeback. It was insane. Like, like I was blown away by not just, obviously, his size and his mass you know, factor, but his conditioning, man. Like, the conditioning that he brought – Mm -hmm. For that level of size, I mean, I'm known for my conditioning. You know, I'll say it like that. I'm known for Absolutely. my conditioning. I was blown away with his conditioning at that at that level. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Absolutely. And, and Steve as well. I mean, that's a great storyline oh there. Um, I actually just got off uh, another podcast with a guy. You guys will see it in a little bit. Um, but um, a frequent co-host, Ty Jordan, he's a NPC super heavyweight. A good guy. Really good guy. Um, I know Ty on instagram <laughs> yeah 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 he's he's awesome he makes some good content um but he was talking about how somehow sometimes you know life life can play a factor in someone's prep and in how they present their physiques and i don't want to spoil the episode but ty brought a lot of really good points of maybe some reasons why steve kuklo decided to come in smaller and more conditioned so uh, make sure you guys check that video out. It's going to be coming out uh, tonight. Everything's coming out tonight. So uh, I'll be up. I'm going to be up all night. I still got two more videos to make for women's wellness and bikini. So it's going to be a long Man. night. And once again, you know, I do want to thank you for covering those divisions as well, too. Um, like you said, we definitely need more people, you know, looking out, looking out for all the different divisions. I was talking to, um, I don't know if you know him. Uh, he's another, you know, guy on Instagram, or excuse me, on YouTube who I like a lot. Hart McGrath. Yeah. I was actually talking to him um, not too long ago and, you know, he was basically just saying, you know, we got to look out for, you know, the other, you know, the other divisions, the little guys, things like mm -hmm. that, because there's so much talent in this industry. There's just unlimited amounts of talent. And, you know, when people like you, you know, look, you know, and, and actually look at the wellness divisions, the figure divisions and things like that, you know, that just helps our sports grow. And it helps those, those ladies, you know, that work so very hard, get the recognition that they deserve. Yeah. I mean, apps, I feel like the ladies especially kind of get overlooked by some of these um, bigger channels. I'm not going to say names. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be that guy. Uh, but I know me specifically, I've dogged on men's physique 
And I'm like, eh, I don't cover them. They're not bodybuilding. They don't show the legs. I covered Arnold Classics men's physique. Bonkers. Like just the yeah. amount of size those guys puts on, uh, put on. I don't, do they have a weight cap? I didn't think they have a weight cap. Oh man, they can come in as big as they want. <laughs> those guys got to be monsters. In person, like it's even crazier, you mm. know, because you'll see, you know, you'll see the classic guys and obviously you got some crazy, crazy shapes in person. Mm. But I remember like my first national show, you know, seeing the men's physique guys and I was like, yo, every single one of these guys is bigger than the classic guys. That was before they raised the weight cap for the NPC back in the day. Okay. So back, back then, I mean, classic guys were small compared to men's physique guys, upper body. Now it's a bit more balanced. Um, you're starting to see some crazy, 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 like upper bodies, like. I'm trying to think of just some, some guys off the top of my head, like Divine Wilson, you know, crazy, a crazy upper body in classic. Um, oh, not yeah. the, top four, the whole top four at the Arnold, you know, they've all got crazy, crazy upper bodies and things like that. But one thing I'll say about men's physique is just the development is just insane when it comes to the shoulders, the arms, the upper chest, mm-hmm. things like that, man. Especially where <laughs> classic physique is going. Uh, Cause I feel like sometimes I don't know. Like sometimes I feel like they're going for more of like a smaller compact bodybuilder look, but then you look at other people where it's just beautiful lines. I mean, even yourself, um, you have, you have plenty of muscle on you, but I'd say that your, your trademark going forward is uh, Jared. The keys keys uh, is the lights out conditioning with the flow. Uh, Whereas some other people like um, um, Dino placed fourth in the Olympia and then what second at the Arnold. Yeah. Yeah. That guy. I mean, he's just a, he's just a taller 212 guy with just better lines and better midsection. So there's so like much variety. I, yeah. I feel like in classic, like you're absolutely right about that. I mean, I feel like that's one of the beautiful things about our, our division is that there is that variety. But at the end of the day, I do feel like the more shape, uh, the more structure type classic guys have got to always, you know, come out on top. You know, you got that example with uh, Chris Bumstead, for instance, you know, Chris Bumstead, he's not compact at all. You know, he's very, very, it's weird mm-hmm. because like, I feel like he's built like a short person that's very tall and lanky at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> well, cause, cause I'm six one and there's with the structure wise, he has such a phenomenal X frame. He has the wide clavicles. He has the great quad insertions. You know, right. the quads don't insert too high or too low. Great hamstring drop. Uh, bicep peaks, the full chest, low lat insert, well, moderately low lat insertions. Like you can't build them like that. It's yeah. you know, <laughs> you, you, you're born with you're born with a lot of that. You know, so obviously Chris has worked very very hard to you know improve his but that structure is just it's something you're born with. You know, you're blessed with it. You know, but in that same instance, you know, I also want to pay you know pay respects to Terrence Ruffin, who's built the exact opposite. <laughs> Yeah. It's yeah. like opposite, man. Compact, but still able to control that midsection. Uh, Absolutely. Trademark, like yourself, trademark the conditioning and the flow. Uh, yeah. Super bubbly, round muscle, musculature. Um, yeah, I've been, I followed Terrence when he was still in the NPC, uh, when he was active duty Air Force. I used to watch his car vlogs. Um, and then I kind of, kind of fell out for a while. And then next thing I know, he's, blown up on the IFBB stages and I was like, Oh, Holy crap. So, I mean, it's fun. The more I focus on all these divisions and the more I, you know, become more of a media person, it's, it's fun to see those pe- those names I've seen before. Uh, especially when I do NPC coverage, like that's so much fun. Man, I can only imagine you get to see him come up all the way. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of the same way, you know, when it comes to Terrence Ruffin, he was one of the first, I'll say like this. He was, he was the first classic physique and better. I, like, you know, I, I really, really was into before classic physique even, you know, was a thing, mm-hmm. you know, I remember like back in 2015, you know, watching this stuff, you know, seeing him come up. And then in 2016, when he competed for the first time as a pro, you know, he blew those guys away, you know, in his pro debut getting like, I think he got third to like Darren Charles and Brian Ainsley that, that show, mm-hmm. which was crazy. I don't know if you remember, but Darren Charles was winning like every single show on the, on the roster that year. <laughs> Yeah, 2015. I don't think I was even in bodybuilding back then. Um, I had like a bad breakup in like 2017, 2016. Paid him a bodybuilder. Pay attention, guys. Yeah, yeah. I had a bad one, and then uh, a, was drinking a lot. And then a buddy just reached out, and he's like, "Hey, let's start lifting weights." And I was like, "Okay." And then uh, since then, hooked. 
uh, and then eventually started getting into like, um, I don't want to go on a tangent, but like seeing how bodybuilding news was being presented. I didn't like it. And I was like, I don't want to be like you know, st- stuck up or anything, but I was like, I could do better. You know, I could sure. advocate for the athletes better. You know, I could have more personal interviews. Like I'm just a dude. Like I'm very transparent about everything I do. And uh, it's just been a very fun journey. And I look forward to seeing where, you know, everything's going. This, these last 12 months have been, uh, I think I've said bonkers enough. So I need to switch up the words <laughs> or um, what, what was uh, the last video I said? Um, I said phenomenal too many times. And uh, one of the subscribers messaged me, um, Billy, Billy sent me like 20 different words of like uh, synonyms. <laughs> and I was like, man, you're a troll. <laughs> oh my gosh. Shout out to but, Billy. Shout out to yeah. Billy for being the source. Yeah. Billy's yeah. phenomenal. Uh, I, I love my community. Like just, yeah, they're, they're great people. Um, question I didn't ask you, what got you into bodybuilding? I already shared mine. Like what got you into competing? And I appreciate you asking that. Um, honestly, when I first started lifting weights, you know, I was playing football for the football team and I nope, actually got, nope. you know, the story I got cut. I was too small. You know what I'm saying? I had to come back. They told me to come back, you know, 20 pounds heavier. So came back 20 pounds heavier. You know, I did what they told me to do. I you know increased my speed, got stronger, you know, didn't just gain, you know, gain 20 pounds of fat, but just, you know, came in overall 20 pounds better. Yeah. You know, the following year was the same story. Oh, come back, you know, bigger, you're still too small, you're still too small. And I realized, you know, in that four year period or five or six year period of, you know, trying to get ready for high school football, that I was quite literally being a bodybuilder. I was going to the supplement store, buying creatine. I was eating all the all the crazy bulking, you know, diets you've ever mm. heard of, like a gallon of milk. I did, you know, the whole potatoes, you do baked potatoes, you just carry in your backpack, wow. peanut butter and jelly sandwiches before bed. You know, all of those different things, you know, and I eventually realized, you know, like I care more about improving my physique, you know, improving my strength, improving my performance overall than actually playing football. Yeah. So real quick, you know, going into that, um, it was my senior year in high school and, you know, the season didn't quite go as well as I wanted to. I didn't get the play time that I felt like you know, I really, really wanted. So I said, you know, I want to do a sport where, you know, at the end of the day, I choose my play time. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, base all, I'll base it off of whether this coach thinks I'm good enough or not to, you know, not to compete. Um, I was lucky enough to meet a fitness model in Virginia beach, which is, you know, a big city in our area. And he basically told me long story short, that he was making six figures, you know, being sponsored by Optimum nutrition. And I was mm-hmm. like, what is, what even is that? Like, what is that? So it was like my junior year in high school. And I remember Googling, you know, what's a pro card, you know, what, what does this even mean? You know, I was like, Oh, well, if I don't make it to the NFL, I think I'm going to go for my pro card. <laughs> wow that's some crazy ambition like you had like the two pinnacles of two different sports like it's either this one or this one like you were just all in i always wanted to be an athlete man i mean i've always 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 wanted to be an athlete i just love pushing my body i love um you know seeing how far i go and i'll say it like this each prep i always look back and i'm like holy shit how did i do that but then yeah. you know, give me give me three to six months and i'm like all right let's do it again <laughs> mm-hmm. Dang. That's, uh, I've been trying to lean out, just getting ready for a show. Um, yeah. And, you got anything uh, in mind? No, I, I, I was prepping for, um, there's a show in Sacramento in December. Um, and uh, I tore my hamstring last June and it's just, it still hasn't gotten bad, like better. So like leg training has been kind of rough and um, I just decided to like, just, just pull the plug. Cause I was getting lean, but um, it's just the training. I couldn't push to that next level, um, yeah. mentally in the gym. And I was just like, I'm not going to be able to bring the best package if I can't train at hundred percent. So I think that's probably the, you know, that's, that's an extremely healthy decision to make. So many people, mm-hmm. you know, they get into this idea where they're just like, I have to do this show, you know? Mm-hmm. And then in reality, uh, my, my previous coach, Matt Jansen, you know, said something to me that really, really made a lot of sense. And he was basically just like, you know, yeah, you're a pro now, but you know, you know, you're 24 years old. You're young. That's the gist of it. You're young. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're not having fun doing this, you know, you really, really got to make sure that you're actually doing it for the right reasons, you know, and that you're having fun because yeah. you, know, you should be. So I think that you're still having fun in it, but you also realize you need to take you know a small step back in order to, you know, just set yourself forward. Right. Yeah. And I have no like, um, 
uh, thoughts of like your delusions of grandeur. Uh, I'm six one, two forty. Never been very lean except when I'm like super, super dialed in for a show. Uh, and even then, like it's never been where I'd like to be. So um, I'm gonna cut like another probably twenty, twenty five pounds, and then um, and then we'll get serious. I'll. I think Ty said he's gonna coach me for this one, so um, awesome. we're gonna work with Ty and uh, just let him just completely take the reins and. And then we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm excited to uh, to get lean again. I'm tired. I'm I'm so I, I don't want to say I'm so big, but like I'm big and you you, you know you know when you're in your off seasons, like you can feel like you're just bigger. So yeah, yep. feel the fullness and you mm-hmm. probably feel a lot when you tie your shoes. <laughs> yeah, or my boots. The boots are even worse. Boots, right. <laughs> yeah, but um, well, shoot, man, let's um. I appreciate you sharing all that stuff with us. Uh, I think the fans, I like to focus on that bridging the gap between the fan and the athlete. Cause, cause we're all people at the end of the day, you know, you're an IFBB pro making your pro debut, but you're also a person, you, you know, you have a, a young 15 month old daughter, you have a fiance, um, you have a you know, beginning, uh, you have an origin story, but like we're all people. So I think people like that. I really appreciate this interview, man. Like it's, I like it because, you know, we're kind of going with the flow. <laughs> it's not. Like oh yeah. I don't, there's no script. Culture. Yeah. I'll, I have like, um, I think I already showed you like what I have up on my, my browser. I've got your NPC news online page. I've got your Instagram and that's it. That's <laughs> it. I'm just, uh, I'm just here to have a conversation. I, I love like, it. I, I, love I enjoy it. doing this. Um, let's talk about, I don't want to talk about classic cause you're competing in classic, but um, what are your thoughts on uh, the men's open for the Boston Pro? Wow, man. Yeah, it's going to I think it's going to be really, really good. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll say it like that. Um, I, I do believe that Bonac, you know, if he can come in a little bit better. Well, I mean, if, if he comes in the same exact as he last Yeah, week, if he comes in the there. same, I mean, we're, we're talking <laughs> lights out first across the exactly. board. Exactly, man. I'm, I'm very excited to see what um, what, what Phil Clohar brings. Yes. Very excited. Big Phil oh, fan. Oh my gosh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially for his age, man. Like that's what really, really, you know, impresses me the most. Yeah, like 47, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And just nutty. For, especially from the back. I mean, I'd like to see him next to Bonac from the back. Yeah. Maybe like not, is- maybe not in the legs, because Bonac is just so freaky in the leg department. But got- I'd, I'd like to see the comparisons. Absolutely, absolutely. I saw Regan um, at the check-ins, and he, he's looking crazy. He's looking full, man. I think he's yeah. Little How's little the full. face looking though? I uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he never. <laughs> I just it, it, no. It's no offense to Regan. Like I'm a fan. I look forward to seeing like where his journey goes because people forget he's young. Like he's. I think he's 27. Yeah. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's. he's really I don't. Yeah, know he's my. Exactly. He's my age. So like, like no rush. Uh, but uh, yeah, people make fun of, or they don't make fun, but like people critique him because like. He just doesn't come in, and, and he, yeah, his face always looks like it looks. Well, maybe not, maybe not like that, but yeah, it's like it's um yeah. And then he has the beard, and I think uh, like historically in the '90s, you always had clean shaven faces, but mm-hmm. we're not in the '90s anymore. So like, just let people do their thing. That's right. That's right. But yeah, man. Um, if I had to make a prediction, I got to make a prediction. I'm gonna say William is gonna take it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've got uh, probably Steve in second. And three, four, five. That's a that's a wild card, man. That's a wild card. You got Samson, you got Justin, um, Justin Rodriguez. I actually saw him uh, today, and I, right. I, I, I wasn't as I wasn't impressed with his conditioning last week, but mm-hmm. from his most recent updates, I think that he's definitely you know starting to turn the corner there. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to Dowd, I think the Dowd has got one of the beautifulest shapes in the, in the sport yeah. right now. Most one of the most beautiful shapes. Um, I'm trying to think who else really. Uh, Max Charles will be there. Charles, yeah. I, Regan Grimes. I feel really stupid. I'm gonna say this publicly on the internet so everybody knows. I called Max Charles Phil's Phil today. Phil, I got them mixed up in person. Hey. So I, I take responsibility. And I once again, I'm sorry, Max and Charles or Max and Phil for yeah. getting that. What did Max say? Dude, he was the nicest person mm-hmm. I've ever met when he came to like get a spot. If somebody walked up to me and said, "What's up, Andre Ferguson?" or "What's up, you know, Brandon Hendricks?" or you know, like I don't know, Terrence Ruffin, I'd be like, "What? Like, who is this guy?" Like, like you know, he, uh, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> but with that being said, you know, he he just took it. You know, like he was. 
I said Phil first, and then someone said Max, and I was like, yo, like, you are Max Charles. Like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. And then, it, obviously, I instantly thought back to all the, you know, all the different check-ins and things like that that I'd, you know, seen on my Instagram. I was like, oh, dude, I feel so stupid right now. I shook his mm -hmm. hand. I was like, man, I'm so sorry I called you Phil. You know what I'm saying? And um, beyond that, he was super, super nice, man. He, he said hi to my daughter. He was talking to her, and it, it was really cool. It was really oh, cool. Man. That's good to hear. Yeah. Uh, I think you covered everyone. Um, Bonac for the win, Steve second, and then uh, a toss up between Phil Klahar, Samson Dowda, um, Justin Rodriguez, three, four, five. Um, I think I would like to see, um, I think Regan Grimes will probably round out around six unless he comes really good. Uh, sure. Islam Mohammed, I think, uh, I he think he's going to get overlooked, but I, I think he uh, just based off of some of the videos I saw, he looks really lean. Uh, he's look he's looking like he's going to be on point. Um, I was pretty impressed with consistent with his uh, consistency last year. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he and he did a few shows, so um, like his name's out there. Oh, yeah. Uh, Justin Mackey uh, working Mackey with uh, Nick Walker now, so yeah. we'll see. He looks um, really I'm excited to see uh, Justin Mackey's shape. You know, I feel like once he kind of, you know, comes out a little bit, you know, into his into his fr into his frame a little bit more. He has the legs. The legs are there. The mid the midsection taper is tiny, bonkers. Oh, I said bonkers again. Uh, but I'd say I'd say upper body uh, it needs to catch up with the world class wheels he has. Uh, and I'll then say it like this. You know, I, I I can relate to that a lot. I feel like you know we're kind of in the same boat. Yeah. You know. I don't I don't think I have like I don't think I have the most streamlined waist, but I have a really really good way at showing it. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I don't like, know. I, I thought you had some. I feel like if I were to put my hands around you, the fingers would touch. Like the <laughs> midsections. The <laughs> yeah, the vacuum it counts. It still counts. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm trying uh, to think. One other guy, Nathan Spears, actually making his up. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, so. he is. You know. Nathan, so we're very, man, I'm very excited for him. I saw him come up, you know, these past few years. Yeah, you know, I think everyone's been watching car. him. Yeah, dude, he was getting like he was fighting for that pro card for so long. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was at the point where you know we, I was watching him, you know, and I was excited for him to get his pro card. Then it got to the point where I was, you know, struggling to get my pro card. Mm -hmm. And then you know, granted, I'm in classic, so it's, it's different. But I was able to get my pro card, and then he got his, and I was like, oh damn, that's what's up. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. yeah, lined up well. Yeah, super happy for uh, a nasty Nate Spear. Um, right. Who else? Oh, uh, Douglas Fouché. Uh, we actually had him on the podcast. Douglas, I met Doug today. He's, he's nice. Yeah. So, oh, super fun. Um, nice. Very knowledgeable. Uh, tra him training out of Venice Beach with um, Mike O'Hearn. Uh, I was talking about the uh, in the open lineup video I did. I was like, oh, who's that guy he's always training with? Uh, the fake natty guy. Uh, <laughs> I just I couldn't think of his name. <laughs> That's all I could think of. But um, him and uh, he also trains with Charles Glass a lot. So just so much just wealth and in depth and breadth of knowledge in that gym. Uh, he invited me down there and uh, I'm going to get down there eventually. And just meet him. Uh, uh, we have some. Yeah, we got some stuff in some uh, coals in the coals in the oven. Is that what it is? Irons yeah. in the yeah, whatever. Words are hard. <laughs> it's a consistent saying on this channel. Words are hard. Well, shoot, man. Um, you want to share uh, any sponsors or any anything you want to anything you want to say before we uh, depart for the night? Man, I really really appreciate that. Um, first, I want to give a shout out to uh, Chula Wear. That's actually my closing trunk uh, company. My sponsor, uh, Chula. She's she's super super awesome, guys. She's super super personable. Um, I do believe that you know she's got some of the best closing trunks. You know the highest quality, fast shipping great fits, um, a lot of different options and things like that, even lifestyle clothing. So if you guys are interested in men's physique, uh, posing shorts, bodybuilding, posing trunks, um, classic physique, posing trunks, I highly, highly, highly recommend Chula. I feel like it's a very professional fit. Um, and I feel like, you know, if you want to step on stage, you want to look professional and you can see the best of the best right here. <laughs> yep. Case in point. That's right. That's right. So if you guys want to get a discount with that, just use my code Jared10. Uh, and then my code is my code for Jared10 for all of my all of my different sponsors. Um, also shout out to Jim Pen. Um, Jim Pen is a is a UK based UK based company. Um, they actually make 
machines where you can add more weight to your actual machines. Um, they make D-bar handles where you can do a lot of a variety of different um, angles and things like that. I love to use that D-bar handle for my lat pull downs. Really, mm. really, really aggravate those lats, lower, lower lats. I've been, everything. I've been wanting to get this for a long time, actually. Um, so maybe I'll use Jared Tennant check out. Hey, Jared look at that. Baby. You know that plug. <laughs> <laughs> you know that plug. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, shoot, man. Um, I think everyone's can uh, echo um, my feelings of uh, appreciation for you making time uh, under 12 hours out from your pro debut for this year's Boston pro uh, can't be more excited for you, man. I think you're going to bring uh, something. The judges are going to look forward to uh, the great lines, separations, conditioning, the bonkers proportions. Uh, I think you're going to, I think you're going to do well. And I think you're going to surprise a lot of people. So uh, Jared, man, appreciate you making time to come on here. Uh, we, yeah. we all look forward to seeing you make your pro debut classic physique at the 2022 Boston pro, uh, tomorrow live stream is only nine 99. So make sure you guys use that and use, um, code keys. Is that what it is for 10%? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Code keys for 10% off your live stream purchase. Uh, and then maybe I'll have Sanj active by then, but, uh, in the meantime, use awesome. keys just in case. <laughs> Right. But um, did you get a, a, a gym bag with your last name on it? No, I think I think I might have waited like a week or two, just like one or one week or two weeks too late. Yeah. To get. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to see if I can get like a, a IFBB Pro Media bag. I think that that'd would be, be really cool. cool. Yeah. That'd be really cool. Yeah. I think I I, uh, I I reached out, so we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, man. I'll say like this: the Boston Pro um, staff has been really, really nice and extremely mm -hmm. communicative. This communicative this whole time so i would definitely give it a shout, shout out if you haven't <laughs> yeah, yeah i reached out so we'll, we'll see if not I'll, I'll just buy it myself but um yeah, yeah jared man uh we'll see you uh we'll see you on the live stream all right all right i look forward to seeing y'all in less than 12 hours <laughs> all right guys uh that's another interview on bnn thanks for watching a uh, link for jared's stuff as well as uh any of my affiliate links are going to be in the description of the video uh we'll see you guys in another video see you guys thank you